Good morning, everybody. This is Tom from Weekly Gospel Reflections. Today's message, it is in December. We're lucky to be here in the Philippines. And excited, and today I'm very excited to do a video about uh, Jonah. How many of you guys remember the story of Jonah as a child, getting swallowed by the whale? Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about Jonah and go in depth. <clears throat> and we can relate with this story because... It has a lot to do with our lives now to this day. If you listen to this message today, I think you'll get a, a perspective on uh, how we live today and what we can do to help ourselves and better our lives. We're looking at Jonah 1, and I'm going to read uh, Jonah 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittal. Go to the great city, Nevah, and preach against it, because it is wicked. They come up before me. Now see, the Lord is very kind. The Lord just told Jonah, basically, you know, please go to the city and do what I tell you to do. But Jonah, it really like us as who we are, we make our own decisions. He gave us the free will to do whatever we wanted to do. Jonah did not want to go, so he did not go. He disobeyed the Lord. And so God says... You disobey me, it's okay. But this is what's going to happen to you. Now see, God and Jonah had a particular relationship that God basically told Jonah to do something, and he didn't do it. How many times in our life that we have that happen to us where we're told to do something by someone, bosses, God, life, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, that we decide we don't want to do, we're not going to do it, right? Well, you know what? It's That's what happened to him. Imagine this world without the Ten Commandments. How would things be if we didn't have the Ten Commandments? The Ten Commandments gives us guidance. Guidance in the world to help take away... We all need the Bible as guidance. Because if we didn't have the Bible, what would our world be like? Imagine our world without the Bible. The, it would be horrible. It would be no structure. It's like you got to have laws and you got to have police or crime would be you would live an existence of pure turmoil all the time. If you didn't have police and people to help and watch over you and guide you, that's what God does. God protects us and watch over us. God is saying, Jonah, they're committing sin. So I want you to go do this. Jonah says, no, I'm not going to do this. Can you imagine the world without Tim? It would be, would it be better? Will we treat people the way we want to be treated? Would we be the type of person that we are? Jonah says to himself, I will not go. And I decided I will just go to somewhere else. So he decided to catch a ship to another area. And on the ship, a great storm, God decided that he was going to give a great storm. We all know this. This happens to us in life. A great storm comes upon us in life. That sometimes we need to pray to God to help us get through these things. A storm could be sickness, it could be help, it could be someone uh, requesting money, or it could be creditors, or it could be job. It could be just about anything: alcoholism, uh, drugs, uh, marriage. Marriage is not going well. There are a lot of things in our lives that cause us turmoil, and there are many different things. It could, be, it could be the government. It could be where you live. It could be the environment you're in. You're tired of being in that particular environment. So basically he gets on the ship and he gets on the ship and he stays on the ship. He didn't want to do what God said. So he's going the opposite way. Well, a big storm came up and the captain runs downstairs to Jonah and says, hey, why are you here? What are you doing? Who are you? With the sailors are with them, and they're asking him, hey, who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you acting the way you're acting? Why are you sleeping here? Did you bring calamity upon us? Who is this God that you worship? And who are you? Where'd you come from? So Jonah tells him, I'm Hebrew, and I come from here, this city, and this is who I am, and I serve the Lord thy God, thy God in heaven. Well, Imagine the shipmates and everybody else. You brought calamity upon us. What is this that you did to us? Do we have that in our life? Do we bring calamity upon ourselves because we did not obey God? Did God tell you, tell you something to do? 
If you are a man and you have the Holy Spirit, and a woman, you have the Holy Spirit in you, sometimes God will tell you to help someone. Sometimes God will tell you to do things that maybe you don't want to do. I had an experience one time where I was working and I saw someone in need and I said I should help that person and I didn't. I didn't help that person at all. And I felt like that uh, they're okay, you know, and I maybe felt like that I, it's okay. They're, they'll be fine. Well, as I go forth, the storm came in. A, a, a winter storm came in. It was all of a sudden, it was a blizzard where I, we lived. And I happened to live in Tennessee at the time. So uh, within 24 hours, the storm's running across the state and it's dropping a lot of snow. And so, and it was cold. And I got to thinking about that person. If I had just given him $20, if I had just given him some money, Maybe he could have got out of the cold. Is he okay? And I got to worry him. Did I do the right thing? And sometimes we do that. Did Jonah worry? Well, he probably didn't worry too much about it, but the storm was upon him, and he's thinking, well, get me off this ship. And so the sailor said, okay, we're going to take you to shore. So they put him on this boat, and it got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. So they threw him into the sea. In my situation, I felt so bad for this young man that was out there. Basically, he needed a job. He needed to give a better life. And the sign says, please help me, I need a job. Well, I happen to be a manager. And I couldn't hire anybody at that particular time. They had freezes in the mid-80s. Horrible time for the retail industry at that time. Housing market fell, people out of jobs, no jobs available. There was a little oil crunch during that time also. So I said, okay, I, I, what I'll do is this. So I went, got in the car in the storm. I told the people in the store, uh, we're gonna close down the store today. I want everybody to head home because this storm is gonna be bad. And of course, people are rushing into the store. And so I put a sign on the door. We're closing in you know, X amount of hours. So please get all you need. And people are rushing to get food because they, they don't know how long the store is gonna last. So as you know, they clean out the shelves. Is that the same thing that you do sometimes maybe with God? Do you, do you plan ahead? Do you see things like that? God showed me that I should help that guy. I said to myself, I'll go find him. I looked around and went to the Ford dealership where he's down in front of. I said, what happened to that guy? And they were closing up. I went to another place where he's standing on the corner where I saw him walking from. It was a restaurant. Did you see this guy? Oh, yeah, we did. We fed him. And he is actually staying in the very back of the restaurant about the dumpster. He's got a tent out there. I said, he ain't going to survive. There's no way. They said, I know it's cold. It's going to be down below zero tonight. So I said, I guess, I, can you help me find this guy? I went out there and couldn't find him. So I saw him in the woods. I grabbed the guy, pulled him out of the woods, and said, okay, let's, let's, let's get you a room. Let's get you a motel room for three days or four days. The motel was just only about 300 yards. Drove him down there, got him a room. Swore away, bought him. I had food with me because being from the store, I had, you know, Cokes and drinks and snacks. The food that he can open a can and eat. And he could live very well for three, four days. And I said, when this is over, come down to the store. I'll, I'll figure out a way to get you a job. If anything, clean it up and I'll pay you petty cash. So I felt good in my heart. I left, everything's fine, hotel bill's paid, he's fine, he's warm, he's contented. Storm knocked out the power everywhere. It was just, a, it was a bad time, it was a nice storm and then snow came behind it and you guys know the stories, what happens there. But people did not freeze and he did not freeze, he's in a closed environment and the people on the hotel took care of it. We sometimes don't really realize, just that spur of the moment. But Jonah says, okay, I'm good. So he gets in there and God says, I'm going to teach you a lesson. So he takes a whale, a big whale, and they eat him. He puts him in his stomach. Can you imagine going in there? Imagine the world like that. Imagine what the Lord can do to us just with a, a blink of an eye or a snap of a finger or a thought. The Lord, we don't know what he could do and how he could do it, but it could be just a, a wink. And all of a sudden, all these things can happen to you. See, time is nothing to God. God lives forever. Time is a lot for us. And that time of three days had to be 
many hours to him. It had to be many hours where he is saying, how I've been in here a month, I've been in here a week, I've been in here days, because when you're in an environment like that, it's like prisoners sometimes don't realize, I'm out already. It seemed like I just got here because they're in the closed environment. But then they get out and they cannot communicate and they cannot do things because they forgot how to communicate, forgot how to do a social life, and that's the reason a lot of it fails. Do we know what is right or wrong? We do. We know that we should, if we do anything, we follow the Ten Commandments and it will help guide us through our life. So as the storm's getting worse and he's inside the belly of this big fish and it probably smells and, and stinks and uh, all the odors and everything else that's in there with him. But he's got to eat. What is he eating? He's got to drink water. What water is he drinking? Is it sea water? Did God give him water? I'm sure he did. Can we sustain ourselves through water? Is he getting water through the fish? Could be. Is there fish in there? What's in there? This well is not just laying there in the ocean. You know he's swimming. And you know this is what life is about. Left, right, up and down. God is get, telling us in our life that's what we're going to happen. We're going to have good times. We're going to have bad times. We're going to have times that's going to be flourishing. We're going to have bad times also. And a bad time could be as we're sitting here. It seems like it's been 10 years. And it could have been. It could have been 15 years of bad times. But God always has a plan, and it's going to get so good for you in the future that you're going to have a future, and it's going to be a million times better. Because life with God is going to be just wonderful. But God can make a good place for you here also. You just have to trust in God and trust that He's going to do it in His due time, in His timing. Sometimes we don't realize how loving and forgiving and kind and pure and holy God is. So God says, okay, I'm going to let you out after three days and three nights. Three days and three nights. He gets out, so the well spits him up. Did the well take him to shore? Possibly. It doesn't really say where he dropped him off at. But he finds his way to Nivea, where he needed to go. And as he's telling everybody this place is going to be destroyed by God because you're wicked. Then he takes off and he hides in a shack. What is God going to do to me? What is God going to do? God teaches him a big lesson in life. With the vine and the dying vine, God teaches Jonah a lot. And Jonah should realize that don't be angry with God. Be angry with yourself because you did not do what God said do. Sometimes we, we are told things in our mind. Sometimes we're told things that we should do things and we don't do them. But yet, we still go sin and we go back into that sinning part. We go to commit the sin and commit the same thoughts that we had yesterday. And I'm going to act upon my sin. The temptations hit you. God is telling you, do not act on those temptations. But yet you do. So what is in store for you in your future? Well, will God forgive you? Well, if you're doing it in a way that is acting the same and the same and the same, will God eventually stop saying, please forgive me for my sins? Eventually, he's going to say, yeah, you're committing the same sin that you committed yesterday and the day before and last year and the year before that and the year before that. What we need to do is take a look at our lives in depth. And necessarily, don't be like Jonah. Jonah says, he was angry with the Lord, so he's talking to the Lord. The Lord says, I should take your life. And Jonah says, it's better that I should die. But see, here's the thing about that. God taught him, but sometimes we don't listen to God. God teaches us things that sometimes we just we listen to, but we don't listen to. God tells us, listen, this is what I'd like for you to do. This is in the Bible. This I'm telling you to do these things. I'm telling you to do all the things in this Bible. I'm telling you to follow the Ten Commandments. I'm t telling you to obey the laws. I'm telling you to do what you're supposed to do. Because if we didn't have the laws and obey the laws, where will we be? God tells us all the time that we should always take the time, worship Him, cherish Him, and tell the world about Him. And do we do that? Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we only pray in the times of need. 
Is God a want or a need? I need God. Is he a want? He can be a want. Is it something that you need in your life? You need God in your life. God will fulfill the, the Sometimes what it is, you, you're not feeling full. You feel like you're this far up and you're not all the way to the top full. Pray to the Lord to help fill me up to the top with the Holy Spirit. We sometimes, even during the holidays, we get depressed and worry about things. And we uh, it's the most depressing time of the year for many because they don't have money. The credit card debt is up because they had to buy gifts for the children, the grandkids and everything else. And they don't have the money and they're barely making money now. But they put it on the card so the kids would have a good Christmas. And I think what we should do is it's not about the gifts. It's not about the giving of the gifts. It's about sharing and being close to the family and loving each other and caring and caring about each other enough that you're not going to worry about things. Jonah, as he's sitting there in that well, did he worry? He's probably wondering, am I ever getting out of here? And he prayed a long prayer to the Heavenly Father. Let me out, please. We all need to do that. We all need to pray to the Heavenly Father and say to the Lord, please help me and guide me. Please help me get through the things I'm having a hard time with. God will get you through those things. But during that time, we all need, including myself, we all need to pray the Heavenly Father and keep His commandments and keep what He says do. Because maybe He is testing. And as Nivea heard the, 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 the king heard this, he drops on the floor and tells everybody in the country of 20,000 people, please, please get on your knees, put a sackcloth and dirt on your head because you are a sinner. Please, God, save us from this. Even they did what was supposed to be done. They said, Lord, please save us because you know what? We trust in you. We will not sin anymore. Did Jonah do that? He went and hid in a, in a shack. Or in a small rock area, a small area, a place. Where he was sitting there in a vine. God made a vine to curl up and cover his head and keep him cool. Then the next day, or the same day, God decides he's going to get a worm and eat the vine. And kill the vine and teach him a lesson. Did Jonah really listen to the lesson? He was so blessed to even be in the sight of the Lord and the Lord talking to him. I don't know what I'd do. If I had the Lord there talking to me and I knew it was the Lord meaning in words that I could understand and the Lord told him to go there and do this just to be there what an honor what an honor and then he's angry with God and talks back to God I don't know who you are or what I would never talk back to God if he's talking to me and he's telling me something I'd be on my knees Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Whatever you say, I will go. I will do whatever you say. The wrath of God, a blink, a, a, a thought, or however God does his power is just unbelievable. But he's forgiving. He's pure. He's honest. He's sincere. We're his children. He loves us. Really makes you think. So the answer to all this is prayer prayer, prayer, earnestly, honestly, and never stop praying. Even when you're working, even when you're typing on the computer, Lord, thank you. Thank you for the ability of me to type. Thank you for the ability I'm sitting in an air conditioned building. Thank you for my life. Even though things aren't going the way I want them to, but I am so happy I have you in my life and things are going okay. I'll get through the things. The problem is a lot of people don't realize they have so much, but they think they have so little. 
God bless everybody, and I'll see you guys next time on Weekly Gospel Reflection. This is Tom. God bless.